Hi everyone, welcome to the double header video for weeks 6 and 7 for XI 232. In these two weeks we learned a whole lot of new stuff. We learned all about life insurances. So these are benefits that depend on uh, the death of the policyholder. So they pay out either upon the death or sometimes upon the survival of the person to the end of a certain term. And there were six different kinds of insurances that we looked, like, looked at in general. We have whole life insurance, which pays out, covers the person for their entire lifetime, term life, which only covers up to n years, pure endowment, which just pays out on survival to n years, endowment insurance, which is a combination of term and a pure endowment, so it pays out within n years if the person dies, or pays out if they make it to the end of n years. And then we had two sort of special cases. We could have deferred uh, any of these benefits, so we could have deferred whole life or deferred term or deferred anything. And we can also have increasing insurances. That was the last thing we talked about. So insurances where the benefit actually goes up with the number of years survived. So some basic broad cases. And each one of these could have a different payment scheme. We can have continuous, which is where the payment is made immediately upon death. So obviously not a very realistic assumption, but mathematically it makes it easy to calculate. We could have annual, where the benefit is paid at the end of the year of death. Again, not very realistic. And we could have the most realistic and most difficult case, which is where the benefit is paid at the end of the 1 over nth of a year of death. So if m was equal to 12, it would be paid at the end of the month of death. If m were a quarter, sorry, if m were 4, it would be paid at the end of the quarter of death. So we can think of the annual case as basically the building blocks for all of our other cases. We develop some relationships to link these three different payment options. The annual is easy to calculate if you have a life table, and then from there we can calculate the continuous case or the monthly case. We'd be interested as an insurance company, of course, in the expected value of this benefit. And we're not just looking at the expected value of a known amount, we're looking at the expected value of the present value of those payments. So all of the future possible payments need to be discounted back two times zero, and then we take the expected value. So in all of these cases, the expected present value, or sometimes actuarial value, that's another term for it, it all comes down to the same basic principle. We're looking at the amount of the benefit paid times the, some sort of discount factor, so bringing it back to time zero, times the probability that the benefit is paid at that time. And then we want to either sum or integrate, depending on whether it's continuous or discrete, over all possible payment dates. And that principle is true for every single insurance contract and every single payment timing that you could ever come up with. Amount times discount times the probability of the benefit being paid at that time, summed or integrated over all times. If we want the variance, which the insurance company would definitely be interested in, some sort of measure of the risk of this contract, we've developed this notation where we have a uh, 2 above the A, and that's just indicating that we're evaluating the same expression just at a force of interest of twice as high. So delta would be equal to 2 delta instead, or V would be equal to V squared instead. So we just artificially inflate that interest rate and recalculate. That gives us the second moment of the random variable. And then of course we subtract off the random variable squared to get that variance. So the variance for any of these benefits is also going to look like that. Last thing we looked at were some relationships between them. We have two basic ones, a term insurance plus a pure endowment is equal to an endowment insurance, that's a really basic one. And another one which is really helpful is that a whole life insurance can be expressed as an n-year term insurance plus an n-year deferred whole life insurance. So basically the term insurance covers them for the first n years and the n-year deferred whole life covers them for the rest of their life after that. So those two things added together should have the same value as a whole life starting at age x. So we've got that, those two relationships within each payment category, and then we also developed relationships between the continuous annual and monthly cases. And using the uniform distribution of deaths assumption, or UDD, for the fractional age assumption, we developed the results in that case. And it turns out to be a really nice result. If we're comparing continuous with annual, we simply get there in a ratio of i over delta, and if we, get, if we compare m3 with annual, we get the ratio of i over i upper n. So those relationships just are, come straight from UDD. We proved the continuous one in class, and I left the m3 one as uh, an exercise for you guys. But those relationships mean that if we know the annual present values, we can get any result for any payment time and any of these insurance contracts. 
So a lot of stuff we learned this week. We will get lots of chances to practice that during the tutorial and on the assignment, of course. Uh, see you on Monday, and good night.